You're listening to the main event with Zach Gelb and Mike Zahn on WHIP. Eleven thirty-three is the time in the WHIP studios. You're listening to WHIP Radio in Philadelphia, all via iHeart Radio. Make sure you download the iHeart Radio application today on your mobile devices and tablets. But the big news here in the studio is Temple Penn State. We are one day away as the Owls look to take down the Nittany Lions for the first time in 74 years. So let's go out to the hotline right now and welcome in a former Temple Owl, and that is our good friend Steve Maneri. Steve, it's Zach and Mike here, WHIP Radio in Philadelphia on Temple University's campus. Thanks for a few minutes. How are you? I'm doing good, Zach. Good to be here, man. Well, it's great to have you on, and um, I'm in a good mood today because, as you know, I'm a Patriot fan, and I'm wearing my Tom Brady jersey, and Brady's going to be back on the field uh, for the first four games, and uh, his suspension got taken away yesterday by Judge Berman. But before we get to the whole Temple-Penn State matchup, you did spend some time with the New England Patriots. So when that news came out yesterday morning, what was your reaction to the Tom Brady news? I was happy for him. He uh, Nobody works harder in the game than Tom Brady. Um I don't know the ins and outs of the whole the whole process, and that judge knows it better than anybody. So I trust his decision. I mean, I I, don't, I can't sit here and tell you a lot of people are speculating about it, but uh, I think the right call was made based on the information that the judge got. And you could sit there and listen to everyone and their analysis of what happened. And you had people claiming before the ruling, hey, this is what's going to happen. The NFL is going to win. Or, uh, hey, Tom Brady's going to win. And I just sat there all along and I said, the only person that's going to know that decision is Judge Berman. And when I take a whole look at this, there was just really no evidence from the NFL standpoint. And a big thing now is Roger Goodell has lost multiple times in a court of law. And the Players Association has been winning those disputes. Where's the players' trust rate? Right now in the commissioner. Do you trust the commissioner in Roger Goodell? I mean, he wants to have absolute power. And that's not the same issue with the players and the NFLPA. Um, we're in a democracy in America, and he wants to make it a dictatorship. And, and that's kind of that's kind of the issue right now between the players and the, and the commissioner. You were in that Patriots locker room last year, and uh, you were released right before the AFC Championship games. Did you ever hear, ever hear about any talks about deflating football? When this story came out, were you at all surprised, or was there really something going on behind the scenes? Uh, nothing I saw. I mean, if something was ever to happen, I probably wouldn't know anyway. But, uh, yeah, no, there was, there was nothing obvious about it. There was nothing out there. Uh, honestly, I think it's just a, it was a witch hunt, and in the, in the, the whole process was a witch hunt. I mean, I can't really – comment on it just because they never was they never experienced anything to do with it and we're talking to Steve Maneri, current NFL free agent. We hope to get that change soon, no longer a free agent. But as much fun as it is talking Pats, what is the brotherhood like when you go to a camp you know, in New Jersey with the New York Jets and the head football coach, Temple alum, best defensive player, Mo Wilkerson, you played with, Temple alum, Jaquan Jarrett, Temple alum. It, are there any inside jokes between you guys, or is it just understood that there's a certain relationship between you guys? Yeah, it was definitely nice to have Temple in the building. I mean, we had some of the trainers were from Temple also. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about it. We talked about North Broad Street. Uh, it's just, it was good to have that connection when you get there and to know people on, on a team. Anytime you go to a new team, it's good to have people you know. And uh, Coach Bowles was, was very welcoming and, you know, very proud of Temple. Um, but it was just, it's just a good – it's good to have guys like that in the NFL. You know, you go to a team and there's a bunch of Temple guys. It's good to have to know that when I first got to Temple, there wasn't a lot of guys in the NFL. So that's obviously changed over the past six, seven years. Well, Tur- Temple certainly is a, f- a fun place, a great place, a great place to play football. And you were fortunate enough to play football here. So bring me back to your playing days. Any any big moments or memories you have from your playing days? Of course, yeah. There's a lot of – I mean, just the whole process of turning it around from – my first year, we were one eleven, got beat six or two to nothing in games, back to back games. Uh, to go from that to go to a bowl game and win nine games in a row was, was just, you know, was huge for us. And uh, I had plenty of memories with the guys. And the one thing that happens in college is so much more than the pros is the camaraderie. It's just being in the locker room with those guys because you spend your whole life with those guys. You are the pros, it's people with families, people with the job. And uh, you know, you see someone in the locker room as a freshman, four years later, they're still going to be there. In the NFL, four days later, they might not be there. So that's the one thing I really miss about college the most, the camaraderie and the guys. 
Well, you talk about the camaraderie of college, and so what, what are the Temple Owls in store for tomorrow facing a cross-state rival in Penn State? And rumor has it tomorrow is sold out. What, what are the Owls in store for tomorrow? Oh, it's going to be a show. I can't wait. I mean, we, we unfortunately, we didn't get to beat Penn State in my four years there and since then, but uh, I think those guys are ready. I talked to some guys and very excited about the game. We're spending a few minutes with Steve Minari, who joins us on the hotline right now, WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. And I looked up those scores from when you guys played Penn State, and they weren't all that pretty. You know the history right. between these two schools. It's been 74 years. The Temple fan base, they're dying to get this victory. The football team, they'll underplay it a little bit. They'll say, hey, we got Cincinnati the next week. That's an in-conference game. That means a little bit more. But everyone that roots for Temple football wants to see a win tomorrow, and they have a legitimate chance. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I picked Penn State to win the football game, but Temple does have a good chance to compete tomorrow. So as an alum, if you're able to walk out of that stadium tomorrow and you're going to be going to the game with a Temple victory, what would that mean for the program? It would, it would mean everything. I mean, it's, it's just another step in the right direction. We uh, and I know people downplay the game and say it's just another game, but any first game of the season, you know, you go game by game during the season and you have six days to prepare, seven days to prepare for a team. He had all season prepared for this game, all off season. So from the day they found out they weren't going to a bowl last year till this moment tomorrow, guys are training, guys are thinking about Penn State, and and it's these guys are ready for it. And I can't wait to watch it. That's why, to me, that there's no excuses for tomorrow because you had all off season to prepare for de- uh, for Penn State, and you're right, you could downplay it, and that's the way good football teams do. They try to make every game appear to be even, and in, in, in each and every game you play. But we all know there's a little bit something more on the line for this game uh, when you talk about playing an in-state rival of Penn State. The big problem with the Temple Owls last year was their offense was anemic at times. Uh, they weren't able to move the football. They turned it over a lot in the off season. They bring back Robbie Anderson, who was here during PJ Walker's freshman year and was his best and favorite target. They bring in Adonis Jennings from Pitt, who is a four-star talent, and then they enhance this run game. P.J. Walker, though you look at him, it all starts with him and not turning over the football. How do you want to see him improve this football season? I mean, he's growing. He's a, this is his third year on the field, so it's uh, he's got a ton of talent. And I mean, he just has to develop and mature. I think that comes naturally. He's got great coaching behind him, and uh, I'm looking forward to him being you know, the leader on the offense, carrying the offense to a height that we haven't seen before. Now you, I'm really excited about him. Now, you played offensive line and tight end um, at your time here uh, in the NFL and, and Temple University. When you take a look at this offensive line this year, there's some consistent faces and a Deion Dawkins and a Kyle Friend, and then there's some new names on this offensive line that had some time last year but weren't really in that starting role. You look at the right tackle spot in Leon Johnson. How long does it take – to build that chemistry up between offensive linemen? Because, Steve, let's be honest, this is probably one of the best fronts they're going to face uh, this entire season because those Penn State guys, they can get after the quarterback. I mean, it's camaraderie. Like, I go back to camaraderie again. Uh, these guys, they spend all day together. They, and there, a lot of them are in class together and study hall together. And, uh, it, it comes with time. It comes with spending time. I mean, I'm sure the coaches are on them about being together, but O-line is the big thing about O-line is communication. you got to be on the same page. If you're all wrong, be wrong together. And as long as these guys are talking, it's going to be loud tomorrow, so that's, that's going to be an issue. But as long as they're talking, communicating, and uh, sticking to their techniques, I think they could uh, – the sky's the limit for them. At the collegiate level versus the pro level, how hard is it to adjust from one week to another? Because this Temple game, and I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but next weekend, Temple's facing in Cincinnati, which might be their hardest in-conference game. How hard is that to not overthink this game, maybe? Well, it depends. If you're playing a really hard team, you're playing the guys that are really good, I'm sure the coach is going to go during the week, go a lot of good on guys. You know, you're not going to go against the scouts. You're going to go against your stars because that gives you the best preparation for how good the guys you're going against are. Um, as far as switching it up, they, the coaches do a great job of scout reports, and they watch a ton of films of the players. And, uh, you know, we kind of know, you know there's only so many fronts you can run. They're pretty uniform throughout the country. So uh, it's, not, it's not as big an issue as you think. But as far as individual personnel, that's something you got to watch. you got to watch closely. And it just takes time. It's the film room, really. 
We had Steve Joachim on earlier in the week of the former uh, Temple quarterback who won the Maxwell back in 1974. And he said Temple, uh, Penn State is a team that plays in spurts, but it's inevitable that Temple is eventually going to go out there and beat Penn State. Now, it hasn't happened in a long time. We all know the years. It's been 74 years. But Temple played Penn State last year, and I thought a real telling quote was from the uh, uh, center of this team, the anchor of the offensive line and Kyle Friend, that last year guys were giddy in Happy Valley. Now you get them back on your turf at the link. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of Penn State fans. We know that. Uh, they travel well, and it's also in the state of Pennsylvania, so there's a lot living here in Philadelphia. But just playing Penn State a year ago, how much more confidence does that give you a player that, you know, you don't necessarily have to line up and say, oh, crap, we're playing Penn State. You could just go out there and play some solid football. I mean, I can promise you this. They're not just happy to be here. They're out there today. To win. They're out there tomorrow to win. I mean, the Penn State fans are going to try to do that. We are a Penn State chant in our stadium, and they're going to take that. They're going to be disrespected by that, and they're going to do everything they can to shut them up. So, uh, I just I'm excited. I hope we have a good turnout as far as Temple fans. I hope we do whatever we can to, you know, kind of drown out the Penn State fans, which is going to be hard because we're in Pennsylvania, and Penn State's been the team there for a long time. But uh, you know. We move the ball. We make plays on defense. That's going to shut them up, and that's going to give, put us in the best position to win. Obviously, you have a good relationship with the head football coach, Matt Rule, as he was here when you played for the Temple Owls under Al Golden, and he was a big part of that offense and getting you guys the building blocks into becoming a good football team. So you know his system. It's obviously different systems, but how long does it take to really understand a Matt Rule playbook and just uh, digest that system and fully understand it? Because you do have some guys that did transfer over that should play a big role for this Temple team this year. Yeah, I mean, the guys that were there in the spring, it really helps you because you kind of go through the whole playbook during the spring, and then when you get to camp, you kind of just refresh that all. But there's so much time to go over it. Just, and these guys, they've been over there, and, you know, when you put a whole playbook in for each game, you only have put a slice of the playbook in for that game plan. So these guys know these plays inside out. So I, I'm, I'm not expecting many missed assignments tomorrow. I mean, these guys are going to be ready to go. We're wrapping up here with Steve Maneri. And, Steve, I would love to know, where are you going to be sitting? Are you going to be dressed up head-to-toe tomorrow in, in cherry and white? What, what, what's, uh, what are you going to be doing tomorrow and, and your apparel? I'll be on the sideline with my former teammates and uh, with the guys. So we'll, we'll be ready for it. Though. We're going to go rally. We're going to hang out in the parking lot and speak to see everybody that I went to school with and, you know, alumni. We're a big family temple, and everybody's excited to see each other. But uh, once the game starts, more business from there. You hoping to have an extra year of eligibility? Maybe they put you in for a sideline pass? Oh, I would love to. I don't need a sideline pass. Put me, put me head up on a stick stick. They can only put him on his ass. <laughs> 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 who are some of those guys that you still keep in contact with? Like, like who are you coming to the game with tomorrow? Uh, I'm coming with John Palumbo. We're both from North Jersey, so we're driving down together. But uh, we're going to – I mean, everybody's going. Everybody we played with, you know, uh, I'm sure Muhammad and Dick Warner I haven't really talked to them since I got released. Uh, Matt Bell Savage. Juan Charlton, Bill Bartacci, Alex Joseph, Ma, uh, Mo Brown, Marquise Brown. There's going to be a lot of guys there. All right. Well, we appreciate the time today, Steve. I'm sure we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a million, and uh, we do appreciate you coming on. We'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, man. Good to be on here. I'll talk to you guys. Yeah. There's Steve Maneri joining us on the hotline. Great answer right there. I'm going to put him on his ass. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> well, when, when you're as big as he is, you, you can afford to say things like that. So yeah. you, you, you can <laughs> be true. that confident. You know, I, I could say him too at times, but, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can really back it up all the yeah. time. Like if I had to go out, like uh, when um, the AD Patrick Kraft was in the studio the other day and he said, oh, well, we'll put you in for a play. Yeah, I could go out there. I'll probably end up tearing an ACL and hurting myself. <laughs> oh, no, Zach, come on. <laughs> you think I'd be able to go out there? And make I, a you, play? You've been going to the gym lately. Yeah, I have been. My so, mom's listening, so good. You know, hey, the way you said that, it, it, no, it, you, it irritates me a little bit. No, you you can keep up with them. I'm saying. Eh, I don't know about that. I'm telling you, be more confident. <laughs> All right, time to WHIP Studios 11:47. When we come back, we'll give you our predictions for the game. We'll give you a score and all that, and tell you who's going to win, Temple and Penn State.